Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page eight of Let's Get Artsy, page eight. And we're gonna do a twist pop on this page, and we've built them before, but I'm gonna do another one. And you're gonna we're gonna build the pop mechanism before we actually put it in the book. This is 12 by 6, scored at 6. 12 by 6, scored at 6. And this is 12 by 4, 12 inches across, 4 inches tall, and you're going to score at 3, 6, and 9. 3, 6, and 9. Set those aside. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to build a mechanism that actually um, allows the card to come out, twist, and display. So it goes in the card like this, and it'll come out like that. Actually, I'm going to have it come out up and down instead of side to side. <clears throat> So you're going to need to build one of these, and this is the hardest part, um, only because the cardstock's kind of bulky, so it's a little bit hard to, to manage. But the first two parts are very easy. It's 4 by 12. You're going to score at 6 in half uh, horizontally, and then you're going to turn it vertically and score at 2 and score it in half. So in half, in half. Then we're going to introduce these X lines, right? So there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, I, and I don't always have good luck the first time. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take this center score line. So you're taking the center score line, the horizontal center score line up to the vertical score line. And as once they meet, you're going to flatten this down like so. So there's the point, and you're going to go across, and then you're going to reverse that process, bring the score line up to, so this is the center horizontally, the center vertically, press it into place, and you get this crisscross. Okay, I know that's a little bit hard to explain. I'll tell you where it is from a measurement perspective, which may help, but your the beginning of this score line is at four inches. From here to here is at four inches. Okay, so both of these are going to start at four and then travel from four to six, which is the center line, right? And then it's going to come out over here around eight. Let me double check that. It comes out on eight, yeah. So you're going to start your diagonal at four. It's going to end at eight. Start at eight, end at four. So that's one way to do it. But the easier way to do it is once you've got your X, um, I mean, once you've got your cross, these two score lines, bring that score line up to this one and then flatten it. Do that going the other way as well. There's lots of tutorials on how to do this, um, and I've looked at several. Some, some are easier to follow than others, but I believe um, May May made it. Uh, has a really good, easy to follow tutorial if this is um, a little bit confusing to you. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fold this, and we want the two these two triangles to stand up or to go flat. Sorry, I could do it this way; it's probably easier. We want this valley right here, and then you're going to bring it. You're going to bring these two ends together. And to do that, you kind of have to flatten these two triangles and then pinch these edges together. And then it forms this sort of arrow looking thing. Okay, and that's your pop-up mechanism. So we're done with that. The next thing we would need to do is to install it. Now, the thing that you could do that might cause some confusion um, if you, if these aren't flat, what happens? There's another way to fold it, and it's very clear when, as soon as you get done, it's like, well, that's not it. And of course, now I can't do it. Since I know how to do it right, it's not happening. <laughs> no, that's not it. Anyways, you have to take my word for it. But you might have to go through this process a few times to get it to sort of fold on itself the way um, that I showed where you basically wind up with an arrow. <clears throat> and now, of course, it's not doing that. 
it's not doing what I want it to do. Nope, not that. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I have it turned inside out and upside down and who knows what, but I probably got it. So that's what it looks like, okay? Push these together for your arrow. So this is going to get installed in your 6x12 card. This arrow is going to get um, pointed toward the score line, and I'm going to find my midpoint real quick, which is at 3. And we are going to get the arrow as close to the score line as possible, but we do want it to close. I'm just going to put a little score line there that I can see. Okay. Now I'm going to up apply adhesive to the to this small triangle here. <clears throat> If you don't have a lot of confidence, use tape so you can undo if you want to. And don't rush this if you're using glue. It needs it needs some time to dry. Otherwise, you'll just harm yourself. So I'm going to place the tip, the point, right here at the midpoint, slightly back from the score line. And I want it to be as straight as possible side to side, up and down. Okay. So it's still going to close. Looks like it does. Okay. Okay, I'm going to give it some time to dry. Pick up my extra glue. Okay, now this is the time to you might you can probably wait until you glue both sides, but if it's sticking out slightly past the card, I'm gonna lay it in the trimmer and just knock those little edges off, just so it's not popping out. It's pretty hard to see, but it's sticking out just a tiny bit from the card. <clears throat> looks good. Now we're going to add glue to this side. Same thing. Press it all into place. Give it some time to dry. I'll just set my water bottle on it for a second and close my glue. And yeah, here we go. Okay. Okay. Now we, we haven't even got this card in there. This is going to be bulky, so we are definitely going to design uh, a closure mechanism that comes up and around and holds this closed just because it's kind of bulky. Okay, I've got both sides glued in. I'm going to trim my edge real quick. So now I have a nice crisp edge. And this should open. There it goes. Okay. So everything is working as expected. I'm going to get rid of my extra bits of glue here. They're going to become a nuisance over time. Okay. A little bit of extra glue on the inside too. It was a little too close to the edges. Okay. <clears throat> 
Okay, now we're going to have it open left to right, and then we're going to apply uh, this stack of cards on top of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply glue to one side and then glue to one side down here. So basically we'll take this corner and apply it here and this corner and apply it there. And then when they are attached, and we go to close, I think I've got it backwards, it's going to go like that. Uh, backwards meaning that the, the peak should be in the center. When you go to close, it, that's what's going to happen. And of course it's swa swashing around because um, I don't have the glue down yet. And I can't hold it that tight with my fingers. It wants to slide around. So I'm trying to decide if I want to decorate this before I put it down or not. Um, okay. <clears throat> so I'm laying it on top. So if this piece, I think I told you, was four. I did something wrong. I may have used the wrong strip. So this one was four by 12. And this one is four and three eighths by 12. So let me see if I've got the right size for the, yeah, I do. It should be this one. Are these gonna fit? Yeah, okay. I sized them after these cards. So this is slightly over four, four and one eighth by 12, four and one eighth by 12. You're gonna score at three, six and nine. And then whatever doesn't fit of these cards, I'll trim it down to fit. Okay, now it goes this way. So the peak should be up. These two down, like so. So now I am going to glue this down. So even though I wrote glue over there, I'm reversing it, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. So there's about a sixteenth of an inch overlap, and that's fine. Um, that's just to make sure that this part of the pop-up mechanism does not appear. So it's just slightly smaller than, or narrower, than the cards that are going to sit on top of it. So this is four, and this is four and one eight. Okay, so this is the side I glued, so this is the side I'm going to glue over here. The opposite. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's 
see that needs to get pressed into place still. Good. Just making sure I've got everything pressed into place. I think I can do a little more burnishing on this side. Okay. All right. So that's our pop-up mechanism. And I want it to go this way in the book. So I think. Ooh, maybe not. I'm changing my mind because of the orientation of the cards are vertical and not horizontal. Let's see if we have some other choices. <sighs> too big. I think everything. No, there's a horizontal. So there we go. Yeah, I do have some. I'm not going to use all of them. I'm trying to decide which one I want. Okay, yeah. I'll try to pick something I haven't already sort of featured someplace else. That shouldn't be there. Oh, you know what? Interesting. I based it on this card which is uh, quite a bit bigger than this one, <laughs> quite a bit wider. So these, the ephemeras that were cut apart on both, uh, ephemeras on both sides were was quite a bit smaller. So maybe I will go back to horizontal. I like her. I think I'm going to feature her on the cover. And let's see. Six by six, so I'm thinking, trying to think about, I'm going to pull in my eight by ten base card and think about how this is going to sit in the book. Probably centered like so. When I say centered, I mean centered left to right. Okay, so she needs to be part of the closure mechanism. So what I think I'll do is um, put her on. Probably, let's see, how, how big is this? Four? No, it's three. So maybe a two-inch strip. Let's see, this is two inches. Use this to mat this real quick. So this is my two inch piece I'm going to glue to the back. It's going to come up from the bottom and be a closure here. <clears throat> and I want it to be strong so I'm going to go ahead and glue it most of the way down. And then I'll trim it once I know um, where it's going to sit on top of here. Okay. 
there'll be one more piece of paper around this. It'll be um, design paper so that when you open it up, you won't just see um, black paper. It'll be something prettier. So this is centered. That's an inch on top on bottom. Looks like this would go about right here. So it looks like that's going to be my first score line, but I'm going to wait and address this once this is actually installed on the page. Okay. Now, um, I wanted this to be a blue page and I built the book in order and I ran out of blue paper. And that's one of the reasons why I built out of order is so that my color distribution is what I want it to be. Sometimes I run out of a color because I'm building an order and that happened. I wanted it to be blue and I don't have enough blue to make it blue. So I'm either going to color block or I'm, well, I'm going to color block either way. So what I'm trying to decide is if I'm going to color block this with the eight by eight, a smaller scale, or if I'm going to use the leftover larger scale blue that I have. Same pattern, it's just a larger scale, although I don't know what I did with them now. I had a whole stick of them. Because I had almost decided to do that on page 7 and change my mind. Well, I don't know where it's at. So, and the reason I want blue is I start with blue, that's page 1, and it's always kind of nice to end with something that's a little bit predictable. Um, I like that flow. It's not for everybody, but that's that's my thing. So yeah, I'm still digging for my blues. I don't know what I did with them. I may not have an option. This may be it. Um, and then I want to use this yellow here. And then bring the blue back in with her. So that, that's my current um, plan. I'm going to take a break and see if I can find my other larger scales blues. And then we'll make a decision one way or the other on the background. And then we'll get rolling. Um, yeah. And then uh, for the inside, um, I'm going to probably use all 8x8s. Eight eight. Oh, here they are. Here's some. There's one of those pieces. So that's the difference, the scale, right? So if we look at it, that's a tighter scale. I don't think it really matters until I get this trimmed down because we're looking at way more green and yellow than we would have otherwise. Okay, six by six. So that's the right scale. Wrong orientation. So that's what we're looking at. So this half is with the larger scale tighter scale. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. So I think I'm going to go with a tighter scale. And I am just going to do a very simple color block where it's color blocked right in the center. If I did the blues, it would have been much more of a puzzle. I've got them both the same. That's close enough. Okay, so I'm going to cut these. This is 10 inches. So I'm going to cut them at 5, 4. No, I'm going to cut them both at 5 and then come back and trim them one more time. Um, because we want a little bit uh, from the left and right and then also in the center. And so it looks like I can see the overlap and it looks like I need to take off an eighth of an inch for both actually. So I'm gonna start with one side. <laughs> A little less than an eighth. I'm going to probably run that through the trimmer a couple times to get it perfect. Okay, that ought to be it. 
And if it's not, it's close enough. We are going to ink it and put it down. That is pretty darn good, guys. Pretty happy with that. Okay, now it's our last chance to Change the orientation of the pop-up. I'm going to either have it this way or this way. Since it's a square, it doesn't really matter. I kind of like it this way. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm going all over the place. Maybe we'll go up and down. Okay, I'm going to check this. It needs to be trimmed just a little. Too much. There we go. And then we're going to put a magnet on here. That's about right. Mm -mm. I think I have absolutely every single tool out. <laughs> figure out this place here. So I want her in the center. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to use that and then place it in my score. And square that up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a double. So 
I'm scoring at, you may want to measure it, also may depend on whether or not you're using um, the same card I used. If you use a horizontal card, you're going to have a little bit longer fastener. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to trim this. So this strip, the fastener strip, wound up being nine by two. It's nine inches tall, two inches wide. Blue tape. Whatever you like. All of this is going to get mounted here. Okay, looks good. Okay, now we're going to center it here. on until we find something to cover the back of it with. Okay, we still need to decorate the inside. So, I need a second. Why oh, is that? that? should be crisper. Um, I definitely want to do yellow here. It kind of, basically I want this to disappear. So, Visually, all you really see is her, the frame up here. It's pretty small. I'm going to have some trouble getting this trimmed.
Okay. Hmm. I didn't think that through. I wonder if I should have it go edge to edge instead of that. Think about that for a second. Do we like the black frame or do we want it to go edge to edge? I think I like edge to edge to make it almost disappear. And I won't be inking it for that reason. I might ink the bottom but not the sides because I basically want it to disappear. So. want that line to be continuous so it's really um, hard to tell that it's multiple pieces of paper. Okay. I need to do this by hand. <clears throat> it's just a sliver. <clears throat> that is awesome. That turned out perfect. Now we're going to repeat that. Okay, we did it. Perfect. Of course, could have covered that before we laid it down. But where's the challenge in that? That's pretty darn close. Okay, you can still tell it's separate, but it's not as obvious as having just the black there. Okay, let's get that covered. Got lots of scraps. So now I need to think a little bit about what I want the top and bottom to be like. And I think it helps if we pick out which card we're going to use here because it's going to be kind of the driver of what we're doing. I think I'm going to put her on the cover. So, so yeah. If I do that... Yeah, I think I'm going to use her, oh, the purple one. And then I've got lots of purple paper left. Lots of choices. I don't think I want any orange. Options real quick. I think this pattern and that pattern is too much. I think this works perfect, so that's what we're gonna do. And I have this. 
have it in 12 by 12 also. In fact, let me show you what I've got left. I have two, three 12 by 12s in the fuchsia. That's all the 12 by 12 that are left. Everything else is that has been cut through. And I'm going to save those for the cover and the inside liners. And I'm going to use 8 by 8s here. Which is fine. It's just the same pattern, smaller scale. Should be able to use just one eight by eight for the top and bottom, but we'll find out shortly. Had it upside down. Okay, now we can work this side. Still more. I do like I do like this so I think I'm going to kind of feature her toward the center
just trying to make sure she's not in the score line. So that needs to be trimmed off. Let's see if I can still lift it. Yeah, I can. So I'm going to make this a little bit narrower so that when I fold it, it doesn't stick out. And I'm running out of time. Because I didn't clean up my workspace, I can't find my spatula. expecting. Okay, kind of made a mess at the back of the car, but that's okay because it's going to get covered. So the problem was it was a little too wide and when I folded it, this part was sticking out. So I'm going to narrow it down. And check it again. Better, but it's still too wide. There we go. Perfect. Re ink it. I'm going to write that down because I need to rep replicate this size three more times for the other panels. So it needs to be two and seven eighths. By four. Two and seven eighths by four. Okay. Now I want another purple. To balance this, I think I'm going to put it over there. And then we have, let's see if I can make it out of this. Yes. So I'll use one of my smaller pieces. And seven eighths by four. I'm gonna put it right here, or maybe in the middle. What do you guys think? Here or here? Let's figure out what we're doing there first. I heard what you said. So I want to pull in some more blue. So let's do that. Not the dark blue. I think I like this. This blue. This is actually from the 12 by 12. It is um, this pattern. And uh, by the way, there is one of these in the 8 by 8, but it's just um, a smaller scale and it looks busier. So I'm going to stick with the larger scale. And I don't know why I'm measuring it because I know what it needs to be. Two and seven eighths. By 
board. Okay, so we can do alternate or that. <laughs> what do you guys think? That's too big. I keep wanting to use those frames. They're all going to go on the cover, I guess. I think I like the back and forth. Now we need to work on the bottom. I'm going to use these two stickers. Of course, you could just trim something. Any one of the papers would, would be fine.
Okay. As you can see, I haven't used any stickers. Um, again, a lot of times I don't fully embellish the books because it really ma matters where you're putting your pictures and what pictures you're putting in. So, open and close it just a few times. It kind of trains the corners. Nice, beautiful, simple. Now I am going to look for like some scrolls or some little bits to put here on the edges. I think it turned out to be a very elegant page. Um, and that's it for page eight. So when we get back together, we'll be doing the inside liners and cover for the album. So that's it for today. I'll see you guys soon.